And here is the Writer's Almanac for Saturday, the 11th of January, 2020. 1569, on this date, Elizabeth I held the first state lottery in England. She needed to raise money to build some harbors and do other public works. People lined up at the west door of St. Paul's Cathedral in London to buy their tickets. Winner's name has been lost to us, but the prize was 5,000 pounds, which was huge at the time. The government learned a lesson from this, that the lottery, sometimes known as a voluntary tax, was a great way to bring in some extra revenue. Henry Fielding wrote in his play, The Lottery, A lottery is a taxation upon all the fools in creation, and heaven be praised, it is easily raised, for credulity is always in fashion. It's the birthday of the botanist William Curtis, born Alton, England, 1746. At a time when botanists were writing for other botanists, William Curtis wrote for the general public to teach Londoners how to grow plants from all over the world in their gardens. It's the birthday of the historian Bernard DeVoto, born Ogden, Utah, 1897. He wanted to be a novelist, but he wrote a book called Mark Twain's America, which combined literary criticism and history, and DeVoto found he had a knack for nonfiction. He began writing a monthly column for Harper's Magazine, The Easy Chair, in 1935. He wrote it until his death. In the summer of 1946, DeVoto took a three-month road trip through the West. He wanted to write a novel set in the West and also a history of fur trading. But when he drove out West, he was horrified by the abuse of the land that he discovered there, especially by cattlemen and big timber. He went out West as a historian. He came back a conservationist. He wrote a series of essays for Harper's about the exploitation of the wilderness and devoted himself for the rest of his life, nine more years, to the preservation of Western land and resources. But he also wrote a book called The Hour, a cocktail manifesto, in which he poo-pooed the Manhattan, the daiquiri, all mixed drinks with fruit juices, and wrote, The proper union of gin and vermouth is a great and sudden glory. It is one of the happiest marriages on earth and one of the shortest lived. It was on this date, 1770, Benjamin Franklin introduced rhubarb to America. He'd been ambassador to London, and there he found rhubarb that had come from Central Asia. He sent a crate of it to his friend John Bartram back in the States, and rhubarb appeared in American seed catalogs in 1829, soon became a popular ingredient in pies. John Bartram was the man who was also responsible for introducing kohlrabi and poinsettias to this country. It's the birthday of Alexander Hamilton, 1755, born in the British West Indies, moved to New York City when he was 17. He was an advocate for a strong, centralized national government. He wrote more than half of the Federalist Papers, became leader of the Federalist Party, was Secretary of the Treasury under George Washington. Alexander Hamilton, who wrote The Sacred Rights of Mankind, are written in the whole volume of human nature by the hand of the divinity itself and can never be erased or obscured by mortal power. Here's a poem by Dorothy Parker, two-volume novel. The sun's gone dim and the moon's turned black, for I loved him and he didn't love back. Two-volume novel by Dorothy Parker from the poetry and short stories of Dorothy Parker published by the Modern Library and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.